welcome to this tutorial. My name is Frederik Steinmetz and today I'd like to show you how to export a complex mesh from Blender into a game engine. Unity is my game engine of choice because that's the one I know the most about. Full disclosure, this video was sponsored by Display.Lan, but they didn't give us a script or told us what to say in any way. Now this is the mesh that Gottfried left us off with. It has been imported from the scan and cleaned up inside of Blender. The link to the video on how to do that is in the description below. So let's have a look at the problems that occur if you want to take a raw scan and just drag it into a game engine. Down here it says we have a million faces, which is too much for most cell phones nowadays. And even if you stay on a desktop machine, your GPU will not really appreciate that, especially if you go into VR. So let's heavily decimate this model without losing too much of the detail. Now you can see I labeled this full res, so I'm going to duplicate that and just hide it and call that decimated. Now I tried to use the quadri flow and the voxel remesher, they didn't work at all. They probably need a more proper topology than what we have here. So since I call this decimated, you probably already guessed, I'm going to use the decimate modifier. There's a detailed tutorial on the decimate modifier that explains all the options. So I'm not going to go into that at all. I'm just going to use the standard option and toy around with the ratio. Ratio says we have 100%, so 100% of the faces are left, 1,200,000. And after trying out a few values, I found that 0.02 is a good match. Now I'm aiming for about 20,000 faces. You probably shouldn't exceed 50,000 by too much if you are going on a mobile. And if you can get away with it, of course, subdivide it as much as you can. Now the ratio of 2% gave us 25,000 faces to work with, which is absolutely acceptable. So I'm going to leave it at that. Now let's have a look at the resulting mesh. It looks decent from afar, but if we zoom in, we can see these are not the results we were looking for. So we need to fix that. Luckily, there is a fairly simple way to do so. First, we need to apply the modifier because we need to alter the UVs. All right, now that we have done that, let me drag a UV window here and get into edit mode. It jumps to the original texture that got created. We're not going to use that, but if we have a look at the islands, there's sometimes there are single triangles. That's just not the way you want to unwrap a model. You can take your time unwrapping this by hand. It's actually, uh, you can do it fairly quickly and it's definitely worth it. But for now, I'm going to use Blender's built-in smart UV project. I'm going to leave it at the standard settings and just click OK. All right, that result is much more satisfying. We still have a lot of space left on our canvas, but that's OK. As I said, unwrapping this yourself would give you much nicer results. Now you can see we broke our texture, but that's absolutely fine because we're going to transfer this texture onto the low resolution mesh. So how do we do that? We need a new image. So over here, click new image. I'm going to call this altar. I guess that's what it is. And uh, if I click and drag down on this, I click and drag down, I can alter both these values at the same time. And I'm going to choose 2048. You should always use a number that can be calculated by two to the power of N. So 2048. Click OK. So there we have it, our new and black texture. What I want to do is I want to transfer the full resolution texture from the full resolution mesh onto my newly unwrapped decimated mesh. There's no direct way to do that, to my knowledge, but there's an indirect one which works just fine. So let's go over to the compositing options, click on the full res and choose the shader editor. This is the material that got created by display.land. It has the map in here and it's of course using a principal shader. But at the moment, what I want is not a principal shader because I don't want any light interactions between the big model and the small model. All I want is transfer the color. The easiest way to do that is use an emission shader because the emission shader does nothing but transfer colors. All right, so let's connect this. 
You can also connect this directly. But I want to be on the safe side and use an emission shader for that. And uh, the next thing is we now click on the decimated mesh because it needs a different material. I'm just going to click the X and I'm going to click new. And the material options don't matter at all. All I need is a texture. So shift A, texture, image texture, and choose the newly created one over here. Now this should not be connected to anything. This is just be meant as an input. This node, since it's active, since that's the last image node I clicked on, will tell Cycles this is the image I want to bake to. So if we go back to our layout, we have to unhide the full resolution model. And then I'm going to click on it and then shift right click here. And you can see now the decimated model is in a brighter color. So that's the active one. You can also see that over here decimated. And now I need to go on the rendering options, change this to cycles. It won't work with any other render engine, change this to GPU. So it's faster. And you can also change all of these to one and probably even get away with zero because the emission light doesn't bounce, but I'm going to leave it at one. And under the bake options, you can see the bake type is combined. If we were to choose that, we would bake the normal map, the environment lighting, all that stuff that we don't need. All we want is the emission. As I said, the emission pass transfers the color. It doesn't darken the color by any shadow interaction and so on. So important is we want selected to active because if we don't, we don't get the ray distance option, which is very important because if we use if we leave the ray distance at zero at this point, all the places you see here are in white will be black on our texture because the rays are cast inwards. So if we cast a ray from the full resolution object, which is the one with color here to our decimated object, the rays wouldn't hit anything. So what we do is well, in layman's terms, we, we need a sort of a tolerance for the rays in order to hit an object. I found that a good value was 0.25. You can toy around with this yourself on a different model. It will be a different number. So just make sure that you don't have black spots and that you don't have or any color that gets baked onto a totally wrong position. One would be down here because that's one of the shortest distances between two areas of the mesh. This is just what you need to watch out for. So I'm going to click bake. That took a while, but now we have our map. Let's hide the full res and go back into our compositing because now we can connect the texture and go back to 3D viewport and into material preview. And there we go. This looks a lot better. We have some smooshy areas over here. I think that you can also avoid those by having a proper unwrap. But all in all, this looks absolutely decent. You can see here, this is the problem area that I was talking about. By reducing the ray length, you can avoid this, but I'm going to leave it for now and let's export our object into Unity. So I'm going to click File, Export, FBX. And it's very important to check selected objects only because we have a huge mesh in the background. It would get exported as well. First of all, that takes a while. And second of all, it'll also hang unity for quite a while. And third of all, that's not what we want. So make sure to check selected objects only. Give it a name like alter.fbx and export. Now we also need to export the image that we baked because otherwise unity wouldn't know it's not included in the FBX. And I would also advise against that. I know that other programs do that, but I didn't like it at all. You have much more flexibility if you save your textures externally. Now with your mouse over this image, press Alt S and I'm going to use my textures folder and I'm just going to leave the file format and the name as it is. So save as image. Here we're in Unity. Our FBX folder now contains the altar. I'm going to drag this in here and it looks decent as it is. So I'm going to reset transforms and this thing disappears. So if I zoom in, you can see now we have it. It's about four centimeters tall. It's not very much. So that's not what we want. Let's quickly check the FBX import options. They have convert units. Unity and Blender use the same units. One meter is one unit. So if we convert the units from one meter to one centimeter, it's a hundred times too small. So just uncheck this, press apply. 
and there it is back again. I'm going to create a new material, right click here, create material. And again, altar, I can drag this onto the altar. Double click on it, there we go. And now I have two options. I can use the altar map in my albedo slot. If you use it in the albedo slot, it will interact with the lighting of your surroundings. You should definitely bring down the smoothness because this is not glossy at all. But if you scan this in a different lighting situation and you want to keep that, what you want to do is turn back on the emission, turn down the albedo to whatever value you want. I'm going to choose black and that would this way it would completely keep your lighting situation as it was on the day you scanned it. So that's it. With a few simple steps, we have created a realistic scan of a 3D object and transformed it into a format that Unity or other game engines can read. Both Gottfried and I have been very satisfied with the Display.Land app. It works like a charm. And this concludes our tutorial on how to scan, import and clean your 3D objects. Thank you for watching and as always please do try this at home.